Hello and welcome to this film which is all about aromatic compounds and this has got nothing to do with what they smell like it's got to do with the fact that they contain a benzene type of ring inside them so what we're going to do in this film is look at the molecule called benzene we're going to see what functional group it's got and we're going to look at some physical and chemical evidence that has led us to believe that its structure is something like what we think it is today Okay, so first of all, what is an aromatic compound? So an aromatic compound is any molecule con that contains an aryl fun functional group. What does it look like? It's this six-membered ring with some delocalized de electrons in it. And we're going to look at this in a bit more detail, so don't worry about it too much for now. Just sort of showing you what it might look like. And here in a formula, we can see that a molecule that has this ring in it here it's got a CH3 group attached to the ring, but if it has this ring in it, there's a really low ratio of hydrogens to carbons. Now let's have a look at why that is, by looking at a few different ways in which we can represent this ring structure. Okay, so here is, I suppose, not a very often used one, but it's perfectly acceptable, and this is one where we've shown all the carbons and all the bonds and all the hydrogens. Okay, and what we can see in this ring, hopefully, is that each carbon has formed a single bond to another carbon and a double bond to another carbon. That's left it with one bond, and that's used to attach to a hydrogen. So this is like this is a hydrocarbon, like many of the other molecules we've looked at in this topic. Um, but the formula of this molecule here, if you count up all the atoms, is C6. That's the molecular formula we're talking about here, C6H6. So this really low amount of hydrogen compared to the carbons. Now, this is not the only way of representing it. We can draw it as a kind of shorthand, as we can see in these top two diagrams here, where we haven't bothered showing the carbon atoms. But another thing that we're trying to demonstrate here is the fact that there are resonance forms of benzene. That is to say, these two Lewis diagrams are equivalent, but there's different options for where we can put the double bonds. This might be something that you remember from the bonding topic. Okay, So either we could have these three pairs of carbon atoms joined by double bonds, or those three pairs of carbon atoms. It doesn't really matter which one. And what resonance forms are not really aiming to do is to show that the molecule is either one or the other, or spending some time as one and some time as the other, just that they are different ways of us drawing it. And perhaps somewhere in between these two is where the truth lies. So another really common way of seeing benzene is, once again, without all the carbons shown, but we can see they're the corners of the hexagon. And instead of putting double bonds in, we've kind of spread this whole load of electrons that are in here, these three pairs of electrons that make these double bonds. We've spread them right over the ring. And when we do that, there's an even more common way of showing it, and that's shown on this slide here. Okay, so here we've got the three ways that we've looked at so far. We've got the ring with all the atoms and bonds shown, with the alternating singles and doubles. Here we've got the two shorthand versions which don't show the atoms, but we know what's there because each point of the ring is a carbon atom and anything that's left over must be hydrogen. So here's with the double bonds shown and here's with them having spread right over the ring. Okay, so a few different ways of actually representing it. Now we're going to have a look at which one of those is actually closest to the truth. Now, we've collected lots and lots of evidence about benzene since its structure was proposed a long, long time ago. Okay, but one of the things that we might think about is, well, if it was either this or this structure, then we would expect there to be differences in the length of the bonds here. Now we might remember from the bonding topic that double bonds are shorter than single bonds. So if we could somehow measure the length of the bonds in these rings, which we can using x-ray techniques, we should be able to decide which one of these is closer to the truth. And in actual fact, when we've measured benzene, we've discovered that all the bonds in the ring are actually exactly the same length which means that this model here can't be quite right, can't have single and double bonds. Something must have happened to those electrons that means all these bonds are identical. Okay, let's have a look at some chemical evidence. 
And it's important that we know these forms of evidence because we might be asked to talk about how do we know what we know about benzene or we might be asked to interpret something. Okay, so now this is a little bit more complicated, but here now we're going to start looking at some chemical reactions that we could do with benzene that might lead us to s believe it's either one way or the other. Now here is what might not look like, but is an enthalpy level diagram. It's quite complicated because it's got lots and lots of stuff on it, but let's focus on little parts of it at a time. Here we can see cyclohexene, so six carbons in a ring with one double bond. And we're going to try and get it to take part in an addition reaction like alkenes do. We're going to measure the enthalpy change that happens when we fall back down to this level. And always on this level here is cyclohexane. So we've added these two hydrogen atoms across this double bond and we've discovered, we've measured, that the enthalpy change is exothermic and that it's minus 28.6 kilocalories per mole or minus 119.7 kilojoules per mole. Now here's another molecule that exists, it's called cyclohexa-1,3-diene. Okay, you wouldn't need to know how to name it, but it's basically very similar to that one, except it's got two double bonds in it. If it's got two double bonds in it, we should be able to add twice as much hydrogen. So let's try doing the reaction between that and two hydrogen molecules. And we find that the enthalpy change now is still exothermic, but about twice as much as it was before. And maybe that wouldn't be surprising, because if you hydrogenate twice as many bonds, you might expect to release twice as much energy. And based on that sort of pattern that's unfolding here, we might think, well, in that case, what if we took benzene with its three double bonds and added three hydrogens to it? Well, we'd expect there to be about three times this enthalpy change. So this line here is what we would expect if the molecule had three single and three double bonds, right? If it was acting like one of these, but it just had an extra double bond in it. This is the enthalpy change we actually measure when we use benzene and react it with three hydrogen molecules. And you can see that the enthalpy change is quite a lot smaller, right? So in other words, benzene is quite a lot more stable than we would expect a molecule with three double bonds to be. And remember that by delocalizing electrons, molecules can become more stable. And so the fact that this enthalpy change is so much smaller than we would expect it to be leads us to believe that perhaps there is some stability that has come about from somewhere. And maybe we could use that as evidence to suggest that these electrons have spread right out instead of being confined to these single and double bonds. Now, let's have a look at some chemical reactions. Now, these are going to have um, certain similarities with other hydrocarbons we've looked at. And the way that benzene reacts is going to have something to do with its structure. Okay. Now, we've seen that benzene in some representations looks like an alkene. It clearly sounds like an alkene because it ends in ene, but it reacts like an alkane, right? Which means that instead of adding like alkenes do, it substitutes. Remember, we haven't looked at all that many reactions of alkanes and alkenes. We've looked at substitution and addition reactions. We've looked at combustion reactions. Now, in terms of combustion, Benzene is rather like all of them. It burns, it produces carbon dioxide and water if you give it enough oxygen. But when we react it with halogens and other molecules of that type, because it is more stable, because it is less reactive than most alkenes, it actually ends up reacting like an alkane does. So it will substitute with, al with, uh, with halogens. It won't add. Okay, So that's a really important thing to remember, is that benzene, in spite of looking like and sounding like an alkene, it actually reacts slowly with halogens and in substitution reactions. So it behaves like an alkane does. Right, well, hopefully you've now seen what benzene and um, aryl compounds look like as in you know what the functional group looks like. You've seen different ways of representing that functional group and hopefully you understand the evidence or some of the evidence that we've managed to collect and how it leads us to believe that we've got this delocalized structure rather than the single and the double bonds that we might otherwise predict. If any of it doesn't make sense or if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.